Ever wonder what it would be like to be immortal? Well, in this roguelike platformer, you are an indestructible green blob. Now, while you are immortal, the body you're in control of is not. So every time your body is destroyed on this adventure, your blob of a self rolls back to the starting point and attaches itself to a new body. This of course means you're destined to battle your way through this ever-changing castle again and again. This game ain't easy, and the untimely deaths are sure to eat away at your sanity. So to help you avoid hurling your screen through a wall, here are five tips for dead cells. Tip number one, red, purple, green. These three colors represent the three main stats for your character. Red represents brutality, purple represents tactics, and green represents survival. Scrolls of Power will award you a point to place in one of these three stats, which will alter your damage, health, and mutations. More on that last one in a sec. Be smart about their placement. As you advance through the castle, there are times one stat will be more important to increase than others, so check yourself before you wreck yourself. Point placement will also alter weapons and skills of the same stat type, so pay attention to how it affects your gear. But also, don't stress too much about placement because stats reset each time you die and you're going to die. A lot. Tip number two, a case of the runs. At first glance, this may not seem like a game of progress. When you're killed, you lose all your items, cells, and most of your money. The biggest trick to getting through this game without breaking something IRL is to think of each life as an individual run, a short-lived, highly fragile run. When you find vendors, sell your stuff, spend your gold, and use up those cells because you won't get to carry anything useful from one run to the next. Speaking of vendors, at each new zone, you'll talk to a fella who will allow you to pick up a mutation. These mutations cater to the three stats and scale with the scrolls of power, so keep this in mind when choosing. Mutations also reset with each run, but this is ultimately a good thing because it'll give you the freedom to experiment with your build. Oh, and here's a quick tip. There's always an item after the intro area of the Promenade of the Condemned. Each run, it will spawn a blueprint until you use it. Then, it'll spawn a gem. Tip number three, perma progress. While permadeath is kind of the whole point of Dead Cells, you'll still be progressing. The key to progress is in the blueprints, which you'll find throughout your adventure. When you meet the Collector, you can spend your cells on these blueprints, unlocking permanent upgrades and spawnable items. These can come in the form of new weapon drops and even the amount of money you get to keep upon your death. These upgrades will appear in bottles above your starting area. Think of it like a trophy room or trophy chandelier. Here's another quick tip. After your third spawn, head left of the starting area and up the wall next to the Dead King. Here you can snag yourself a blueprint for a quick bow. Tip four, patterns. This game has been described as soul's light in combat which means there are pattern-based enemies and bosses. Every hit hurts, so it's important to properly parry, roll, and react to the flashing indicators above the enemy's heads. Other patterns to watch out for will be in the castle layout itself. While the castle changes with each run, keep an eye out for consistencies. There's always a treasure chest somewhere in the first area and time doors near the start of the levels after that. These should also help you navigate the castle's ever-shifting interior. Tip number five, things that make you go, Hmm. Pay attention to peculiar things because they likely stand out for a reason. Those blobs you'll be prompted to tickle are actually useful. That is, once you unlock the vine root upgrade after defeating the first mini boss. You'll also want to watch out for glistening walls. Smash those walls for obvious reasons. Doors are another thing. Timed doors encourage speed runs. The timer above the minimap shows you how much time has elapsed since the start of your run. Make it to a timed door before the specified time and you'll earn some awesome items and cells. With gold doors, you can pay to open them or take your chances with knocking them down. Knocking them down will enrage the gods though and you'll need to pay the price to lift the curse. Just keep in mind, this price can't be paid in gold. Cursed chest will act similar to smashing gold doors but can yield powerful weapons and gold to feed your greed. Regular old treasure chests contain things like blueprints or specialty items. They're mostly safe, but can occasionally release a trunk load of angry demon bats, so uh, just be careful, okay? Like we said before, Dead Cells isn't easy, but it is fun and incredibly addicting. This game took everyone by surprise with its sudden rise to popularity, but that's because it has everything you could want from a challenging platformer, especially with that classic risk-reward conundrum. 
So what are you waiting for? Get your permadeath on with Dead Cells.